whip scorpion has a reputation for being one of the most lethal ambush predators in the world. Seeing this guy up close, he's definitely intimidating, but now we're gonna put that reputation to the test. We're gonna test the whip scorpion's shape-shifting ability, the strike speed of its acid-soaked forearms, and the crushing force of its death grip. And my guess is, the data will prove that this little guy is a real life monster. Okay, so first things first, we wanna get his weight. Whoa, he only weighs 0 0.075 ounces. That is a feather. Especially because this guy looks like a little scissor lift. I mean, the range of motion on this guy is incredible. They're purpose built to adapt to any space as needed. We need to test just how he can strike his target from any angle with maximum force, even in tight spaces. So I built this little contraption where we can test that out. How's it work? We're going to put him in here, and then we're slowly going to lower this platform over different heights so we can see how flexible this guy actually is. This test is like a scientific game of limbo. We're going to start at the height of three inches, which is about the whip scorpion's maximum height. And we're gonna lower that height progressively three times to see just how compressed the whip scorpion can become, which is exactly what he does when it's in ambush mode. Let's start with a baseline. The height is three inches. Uh-huh. He's got a lot of space. So let's see what he can do. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh. okay, okay. <laughs> So what I'm seeing here, he is raising his center of gravity to ensure that he can strike his target with maximum force. OK, so now let's see what happens when we cut his space in half. OK. Let's lower this to one and a half inches. Let's see what he's got. All right. Whoa. Oh. His response to this is just phenomenal. His room to work just got cut in half, but he's still just as flexible. He's filling the space to get maximum leverage every time. Let's take it way down. All right, I'm with you. Three quarters of an inch. He is hunkering down. Ready? Yep. There we go. Oh, there it is. Wow. The whip scorpion just shrank down from three inches all the way down to three quarters of an inch. And his claws still have the same dexterity as he did when we first had it at the highest level. He is designed for close quarter combat. That means he can scale down and squeeze into pretty much any nook and cranny in order to hunt down and kill his prey. Nothing in the natural world has that kind of shape-shifting ability. Oh, man. I'm not talking about a crouching tiger or an inflated puffer fish. I'm talking about extreme expansion and compression. You need to look at the mechanical world for that kind of scalability. Large machines built specifically to move up and down in scale, like, say, a spider excavator. Imagine we scaled up our whip scorpion to the height of a spider excavator. That's 288 times the whip scorpion's original height. And then let the two demolish a seven-story building. The excavator could grow from 18 feet to 32. That's not even twice its original height. So it could rip into everything from the ground level to the third floor. But the whip scorpion could swell from 18 feet to 71 feet. That's four times its original height. And it would absolutely raise the building to the ground. That's a truly Frankensteinian transformation. When you see this guy get this small, mm -hmm. but he still has all this flexibility, and he can maneuver to attack prey. That's an amazing range of articulation. At the same time, those claws look really fast. I'm ready to see just how quick he can strike his prey. Let's do it. Okay, here's one of those grubs. Sorry, little guy. This is gonna end badly for somebody. Oh, boy. Oh, there you go. Oh! oh! Wow. <laughs> that was fast. Less than a blink of an eye. Check this out in slow-mo. From the time that his forearm opened to the time it made contact was 0 .006 seconds. The distance between his pedipalps and the millworm, approximately four inches, which means he struck his target at 38 miles per hour. 
that's a bullet out of a gun fast. But speed is only half of the kill equation. For the Whip Scorpion, it's the crush power. That powerful crushing force of those giant spiky forelimbs, that is what actually is fatal. I mean, that is truly a death trap right there. We've got to test that. I want to see just how much crush force a Whip Scorpion can generate relative to his mass. Let's do it. <laughs> I got this pull force sensor. We're going to let him latch on to this electrical wire. We'll be able to know how much force he's actually pulling back, and we'll be able to get a reading. I like it. Bring the pain, little guy. Bring the pain. Boom. He's got it. I'm Here collecting now. He's pulling. He's pulling. I can feel it in my hand. Here it comes. Ready? Here it comes. Got it. He's Ready? got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's pulling. He's pulling. Oh! Oh! There it is. OK, what you get? This featherweight of 0.075 ounces just gave a one-armed bear hug with 0.1 pounds of force. That's nearly 22 times its mass, and double that for both arms. That big arm action is like a North American grizzly bear. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine if the whip scorpion was actually the size of a bear? Let's bulk up our scorpion to 800 pounds, which is the mass of an adult male grizzly bear. Now, if they went head to head in a crushing competition, it would be quite the epic battle. The grizzly has a crush force four times its body weight. So that's a powerful 3,200 pounds, enough to squash a 55 gallon drum like a soda can. The whip scorpion, on the other hand, with a crush force 44 times its mass, would generate more than a whopping 35,000 pounds. With that kind of force, it could squeeze an industrial 500-gallon propane tank into pulp. That's incredible. It's no wonder that nothing that comes within the range of those spike pedipalps leaves alive.